Hey you right guys, Trish much is Joe here and today we are doing part 4 of the tier list where I rank every TV show that I've ever seen ever in the history of... actually not true because I don't have garbage like The X Factor on here which I have watched and like Love Island which we're just not putting on here so not every single show I've seen but shows that I mean I can have an actual opinion on and talk about so uh, this is kind of where we left it out it has been a couple of weeks since I filmed part 3 so... I'm kind of reminding myself here kind of where we're at because since then, since this, Better Call Saul has actually finished and it stays in Goated because it stuck to landing, which was a shock to no one. <laughs> uh, so very happy happy about that because I was kind of a bit... Shows always depend on the ending. Like if Better Call Saul had one of the worst endings of all time, then maybe it could have... Well, it probably should have gone down to Fantastic, but it did not. Uh, I was very, very satisfied with the ending and I'm happy with it being at number three for now. Uh, the only thing I think I'm going to change looking at this is Friends at the moment. Uh, I love Friends. I think it's a bit too high to say I've not finished it just yet. So I am going to take it down just a couple, like probably there. So not too far down, but I think I need to wait till I finish it to see if it's going to be like above Game of Thrones and Amazon because I have finished those. Um, Game of Thrones, like I said, the ending is trash, but is still undoubtedly a, a fantastic show so that's why that's still so high up and yeah i'm happy i'm happy we're gonna start with a banger as well we're gonna try and do probably a couple of rows here so we're not gonna finish it today <laughs> obviously there's still too much to go through but we're starting with if you know me and if you've been on the channel for a while you know how i feel about lost for me very it does have flaws don't get me wrong lost lost has quite a few flaws but for me, I love this show to pieces. I think the characters is one of the best plethora of characters you can ever get in a TV show. I love the setting. Like, uh, for those who don't know, it's about a group of survivors who have crashed on an island. I think it's like 48 survivors or something like that. And you kind of get each character's backstory. Each episode focuses on a different survivor and their backstory. Uh, this is in season one. And, like, the island they're on... Is a bit mysterious, there's some stuff going on that they can't quite explain and they keep that mystery going on and on for six seasons and it has a couple of ups and downs more so in seasons four, five and six I'd say, uh, like I've never denied that but to, for me I think the ending is perfect, I know Lost, whenever you hear about it everyone kind of says how trash the ending is but I love the ending, I think I think a lot. I think if people understand the ending and say it's trash then fairs but I think a lot of people kind of misunderstand it as well at times so it makes me a bit sad maybe i'll do like a big lost <laughs> ending explained even though there's plenty of those on youtube anyway but yeah i think the characters are really what make the show uh it hits all the emotional beats for me i think the music is some of the best music you can ever have in a tv show um i love it i think it's like michael giacchini i think he did the the batman score recently i think he did up and the incredibles i believe he did as well so yeah, he's done some uh, good scores, but I think Lost is definitely his best. I've got it on vinyl back there somewhere, um, and I haven't listened to it in a while, but yeah. I, how can you not have Lost on vinyl? It's perfect. <laughs> uh, I think John Locke's one of the best characters ever. I love him. So I I see its flaws when it comes to Lost, like I do with 24. I see its flaws. I get 24 for me. It's high up based on nostalgia, and Lost is part of that as well. Like I... I was a early teenager when I started Lost and then kind of into my mid-teenagers, late teenagers when it kind of ended and stuff. So it's been there for a while. I think I've, re I think I've rewatched it maybe four times, maybe more than that, maybe like five times. Uh, so if you know me, you know where it's going because Lost for me is my favourite show of all time. Um, so that's at number one. So we've kind of spoiled what the number one is midway through this ranking. Like I said, I know technically... Uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad are better shows than Lost. I understand that, but because this is obviously um, personal <laughs> personal enjoyment when it comes to these shows, Lost for me uh, will be number one. Um, and it probably I don't know if it, it's with The Lord of the Rings when it comes to films. I just there's no way The Lord of the Rings has ever been topped when it comes to best sh films of all times. Shows possibly. Like, as much as I do love Lost, it's not like one of those where it's sacred, where it will stay at number one forever. Uh, because there are times when I do watch, like, Breaking Bad, for example, where Breaking Bad will suddenly be my number one. Or there's times when I'll rewatch 24 and that's my that's my number one all of a sudden. So I think those three in particular could 
switch depending kind of what I'm in the zone for. But more consistently, I think Loss is always the show I mention when I say my favorite show of all time. So uh, we'll go with that. I love it. <laughs> it's just so good. If you haven't watched Lost, watch the first episode. I think the pilot to Lost is one of the best first episodes to any TV show ever. It gets you gripped instantly. In like the first 10 minutes, you are gripped into the story. And if you're not, then I mean, finish the first episode and then you kind of have to be. Because I think the first, I won't say too much, but the first 10 minutes, it like gets you gripped into it and then it ends very well on the first episode where it make, makes you want to watch more. And Lost always does that where every episode ends and you want to put on the next episode. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's my number one. <laughs> uh, straight away into part four. Right, look, what even is this? It's like love and delusions or something. I watched this a long time ago. I remember not enjoying it so much at the start, and then I think it got better and better as it went on. <sighs> I can't... I know it's a love story. It's like a romance um, she kind of lives in her own fancy world because someone's going on with her. I can't remember what. And then she finds someone to connect with in real life. So <laughs> I I cannot remember. I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to put it in... From what I remember about it, again, going off the feeling I seem to remember having about it when I watched it, I think it was really good. I think it started off very average. And then I believe it got better towards the second half. I think it's in like two or three seasons. It's very short. So uh, from what I remember about it, I'm going to put it at the bottom of really good. Probably there. Yeah, probably there. That's one of the one of the animes I remember least about <laughs> based on this, to be honest. But I remember like really liking the second season, so... We'll go with that. Love Death Robots. We just finished the third season of this show. Uh, and what a season it was. For those who don't know, it's very episodic. So every episode is a different story. It's a different animation. A different director. A different team behind it. So uh, every episode is animated though. That's the one consistent thing they have going for it. And I think there's two episodes in there that are like a two-parter. So um, that's... Yeah, but no one really cares. <laughs> so they're... The Witness, in this episode, we did a Love, Death, Robots episodes ranking, and The Witness was my number one. I think it was one of my favourite episodes I've ever watched, ever. I think Jabaro was very good as well. So there are some incredible episodes in this, Good Hunting being one of them. There are some stinky ones, admittedly. I think there's about five or six in there that are not so good. But you can skip those episodes. Like I say, it's not like you need to watch every episode. You can just kind of watch a couple of minutes of one and see if it's a you know, you get the vibe of it or not. I will say, even if there are episodes you don't like, most of these episodes are only around 10 minutes long. Love Death Robots is such an easy watch because just every episode is between 5 to 10 and sometimes maybe 15, but very rarely, uh, minutes. I think there's literally a couple of episodes in there that are maybe 3 or 4 minutes. <laughs> so they were fun reactions. I just whack it on and then I breathed and blinked and then the episode was over. So uh, as a show as a whole... I'm probably going to go, if we can scroll up, thank you mouse, um, I'm just going to put it there for now while I think, while I think, while I think, I'm, th hmm, I'm thinking fantastic, but like towards the bottom, I think some of the best episodes, if they were all on that level, it would be at the top of fantastic, but like I say, there are quite a few episodes in there that aren't so great. So, as a whole, oh, it hurts because I love Jabaro and The Witness so much in Good Hunting. There are some of like, my favourite episodes I've reacted to on the channel is in Love Death Robots. So, let's go. I do prefer it to Black Mirror. So, it's going to be above Black Mirror. I, I mentioned Black Mirror because it's kind of similar where Black Mirror is episodic. And I think... I think Black Mirror has more weaker episodes than... Love Actually, no, it doesn't. Love, Death, Robots has more weaker episodes, but Love, Death, Robots has way more episodes than Black Mirror does, to be fair. But I think the best episodes of Love, Death, Robots... Do I prefer them to the best episodes of Black Mirror? Now I'm starting to question myself. Because <laughs> having more episodes isn't actually a good thing. I think Black Mirror is like three episodes a season is actually perfect. They are like an hour to an hour and a half each, so they are very long, but... I think the best episodes of Black Mirror are really good. <laughs> mm, let's go 
I put Elven lead. Yes, I do. I don't put a dark rose, so I'm going to go there. I think that's a good spot for it. Kind of like in the middle of Fantastic. Like I say, they're just, there are just some episodes in there that aren't so good, like the Yogurt one. I don't know what that was. Alternate histories, stuff like that. It's just like, uh <laughs> not so good. All right, love. I adore this show. I'm not going to say I love this show, because I'm not going to be that guy, but I do adore this show. I think it's not for everyone. It's only three seasons. I think I've watched it twice. The first time I didn't pick up on, on it so much, but the second time, Gus, this character can get very, very annoying sometimes. Uh, if, the, if the title of the TV show didn't give it away, it's a romance uh, based on these two characters. And she's great. She has her ups and downs. She's a very flawed character, which is what you want. You want flawed characters in a TV show. What's the point? Uh, he, though, sometimes is a bit, a bit too flawed <laughs> at times. So he can get very frustrating. But I think it's Gus and Mickey, I want to say their names are... It's been a few years since I've watched it, but yeah, I think minus that, I really like their chemistry on the screen. I think it got cancelled way too soon. I think three seasons was too short because it felt like there was more of a story to tell because it's not just their romance. There is other stuff going on as well, which is good to have. I think if it was just that, just their romance, then three seasons would have been perfect, but it kind of got you invested in more characters as it went on and then it just kind of stopped. I guess it wasn't that popular. It didn't. It does have an ending, so if you are thinking about watching it, you do have an ending. Don't worry. It's not like it gets it got cancelled and you don't have a satisfying ending. It does have a really good one, but I feel like there could have been more. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it. I've always enjoyed the show, so it's going high up. Not quite goated. I don't think it's on that level because there are some moments in there that are a bit like mm, okay, uh, but I'm thinking it's gonna be high. Because I do really love the show. So wow, I said it. I said it. Uh, I'm thinking this isn't going to be this high for everyone. I think there are definitely people who <laughs> who watch this are probably going to hate it. But for me, I'm going to go Buffy. Yes, Buff Clanad. Yes, I'm going to go there. I really, I really enjoy it, but. It kind of like I said with Lost in 24, I understand it does have flaws. Like, they don't always have chemistry, because sometimes he is very frustrating to watch. <laughs> but if you get past that, then it is, I think it's like 20, 30 minute episodes as well, so very easy to watch. Uh, it's on Netflix, so check it out. Lucifer, we never finished Lucifer, we got season two, I think towards the end of season two or something. So, it's not one I'm jumping to get back to. I think out of all the shows that I need to get back to at some point, for me, it's like Buffy is at the number one spot and Shameless, maybe. Lucifer never really kind of comes to mind when I think of that. So, I mean, I enjoyed it. I think a lot of people love this show a lot. And for me, I think the acting was really good. I just, when it comes to, like I said, episodics, this was one of the more egregious ones where every episode is Lucifer investigating a new case. And it did have that overarching story, which you obviously need to have, but that overarching story never gripped me as much as I felt like it should have. It started to get better, to be fair, in season two. So maybe I'll get to it again at some point, but it's just not at the top of my list. And I, I can't with episodic episodes. It's just like, I was on a new case. There was literally, I think, three or four episodes in a row at one point where it's just one case to the next. And we start to guess who like the murderer was or whoever the criminal was they were finding and we guessed it within the first two minutes <laughs> so it kind of and then you wait for 40 minutes for them to figure it out and then it was like okay well that's that then so i'm gonna put it in it's gonna be average and i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it a third hero season one again this is based on a season and a half Lucifer could become incredible for all I know. I don't know, but I do find it kind of funny that the um, is it God in that show is played by Dennis Haysbert, who is the brother. No, wait, let me get this right. There's a character. I forgot what the character the character's name is. Amicia. I, I don't know, but he's played by Wayne Palmer in Twenty Four, and then Wayne Palmer's brother in Twenty Four is called David Palmer. And that is played by the actor who plays God, 
So they're brothers in Lucifer, and they are also playing brothers in 24. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. So I think that's kind of cool. That's probably the best part of the show, actually. So I'm going to put it there. <laughs> uh, you can go there. I should, mm, I should put American Horror Story, so. But Fear the Walking Dead got bad, so. Mad Men. Uh, I got season four? Season four, so I'm not... I didn't complete the show. Complete. I didn't finish it, which I need to do. Because from what I watched of it, it was really well made. It was really well acted. It was a very good story. I didn't have many problems with the show. It just... I don't know, I think it's just one of those shows, you know, when you start something else and then something gets pushed back and it's like, oh, okay, I'm kind of lost where I'm at now because I was literally halfway through a season as well. I think if I was at the start of a season, maybe I'd have continued it. But yeah, it just kind of fell behind. I think I was on season four. <laughs> uh, so I, I need to give it another shot. From what I watched of it, though, it was really good. So not average, it was really good. So let's go. I am going to finish this at some point so this will change when i do finish the show and i did to be fair did watch it about five years ago i think now i'm more appreciative of slower shows even though this wasn't that slow but i think i'm more focused and zoned in with shows like mad men than i would have been five years ago so maybe this isn't going to be a fair shake at where i kind of put this uh so from what i've watched probably there no above that probably there it looks kind of nice next to that as well. So, yeah, I don't think that's fair. That is 100% going to change. It's probably more towards Fantastic. But I've only watched three and a half seasons. So don't take that one too seriously. Because I am going to rewatch that one. As I've said that was about 10 shows now. But I, I do actually mean it. <laughs> I, I need to finish Mad Men at some point. I'm watching The Wire at the moment, which is here somewhere. Where's The Wire? Uh, so once I've got there, it is. Once I've got through that, then every other show's up for up for grabs. So, uh, Made in the Abyss. This is one of those shows that kind of starts out as a genre that you kind of think, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. The concept of this is awesome. It's kind of like, from what I remember about it, it's about five or six years ago since I watched it. It's like a I don't know what it is. Is it like an island or something? I'm not really sure. And it's got like different levels and platforms that go deeper and deeper into the abyss. So it's like a big canyon that comes down. And each level you go down, things get darker and darker and more twisted. And uh, like this starts off on the top and everything's dead happy and cheery. And you're like, oh, okay, this is yeah, an anime, I guess. And then things, every episode, I think it's every episode, they get further and further down into the abyss. And then it starts to get pretty messed up <laughs> towards the end of the season i think season two's just started as well so maybe i need to give that a watch at some point but things started to get wild i think in like the last four episodes leading up to that it was good but i think the last four episodes is where you start to really get an idea of where the show is going to go and stuff so i'm gonna go really good but towards the bottom i think so i'm thinking it was better than that um love ch chibo thing i don't know what that was called let's go i preferred after a samurai definitely so probably there yeah i, I want to give season two a shot but season one was one of those like if you can get into it and get through I, again i hate people who's like oh just give it like 10 20 episodes or something but it's not like the eight or whatever episodes leading up to the final four are bad they are still good episodes it's just it's like your average show and then it you know really grips you at the end so uh yeah it's only like 12 episodes so it might be worth a shot maggie maggie <laughs> i really like this show <laughs> this is one of those shows that's like technically not that good but i really enjoyed it i i think there, uh, there was two seasons when i got to it and then it never got renewed i don't even know if a season three ever came out it was so ridiculous it was like what well, what was it like pirates or something running around <laughs> There's a character called Ali Baba. I know that. But I remember really liking it. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. So, um, not too much to say about it. I'm going to go probably towards the bottom of really good. Like, technically, it wasn't that good. I just had I just had fun with it. So, I'm going to put it below Big Little Lies, but above Doctor Who. So, 
yeah it was it was okay i i had a lot of, i think it's one of those i just had a lot of fun with it even though it was pretty generic and it was one of the more early animes i kind of got into so that's probably why maybe i enjoyed it as much as i did <laughs> maybe if i watched it now i'd be like oh god this is crap making was it making a murderer or something like that the a documentary season one of this incredible season one of this would be in fantastic season two i'd say average so a guy who's falsely accused or allegedly falsely accused of murder and can they get him out of prison very good documentary season one is amazing season one season two is good as well it's not like season two is bad or anything but you can tell they're kind of bringing in the second season because season one did as well as it did and i'm sure they'll do a season three as well because it's still the case is still ongoing so i'm gonna put it in i am gonna put it in fantastic because season one is that good but i think it would have been towards the top of fantastic it's one of the best documentaries uh with season one but season two being there not so much so i'm gonna go above daredevil not as good as fleabag so we'll go there yeah i think there i think season two would have been okay if it was like four or five episodes but they go with the whole i think it's like 12 episodes again it might it might be 10 actually and it's just you can so tell they're padding for time at times you're just like oh, okay well, here's it here's a scene of the mom doing the dishes talking about the trees that i get you need Oh, you know, make you appreciate and enjoy and like the people that you're meant to be rooting for. But sometimes you're like, okay, can we <laughs> can we move on? So there were moments like that in season two. Also, the intro slaps. The intro is done by the composer who did the music for The Last of Us. So, um, what's his name? I don't know. I could just search actually. I don't. I'm not that bothered. So, uh, The Mandalorian. Is that our first Star Wars thing that we have on here? I think it is. I'm not a Star Wars guy. I'll admit, I've said that. I'm not a Star Wars guy. This is why I don't really react to the Star Wars stuff because I, I always have nightmares in my head of me reacting to... I was going to do... Well, I wasn't really, but I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do this Obi-Wan Kenobi show because I like Revenge of the Sith, so maybe I'll react to it. But I just keep having visions of me like not really knowing the lore and the ins and outs of Star Wars and then everyone crying like... Oh, you don't know that character, so now we're going to have a massive Mardi about it because I've seen it happen to other reactors where they react to Star Wars and they don't pick up on something and they get rinsed for it. They get rinsed. I'm, I'm not even touching that. <laughs> Star Wars fans, I think, like, the bad ones are some of the worst <laughs> like, uh, in terms of a fan base that you can have. They're so bad. Don't they constantly, like, bully the actors off Twitter and Instagram and stuff? And it's just like, okay, I don't really want to to be a part of that so i'm good however <laughs> the mandalorian was a really good show so that aside it's just I'm, I'm talking more about me not doing reactions to star wars at this point um a bit episodic in the earlier parts of season one but each of those episodes is really enjoyable i like i like the idea of him going from planet to planet uh learning about different cultures and stuff and different enemies every episode that's kind of cool I don't mind that so much compared to, say, like, Lucifer. Because at least it's a different environment each time. Lucifer's literally in the same city, so it's never a different environment. Um, I didn't watch season two of this. I, I know what happens in season two, but I never got around to it. So I'm going to put it in, I think, really good, but towards the bottom. Like, maybe... It's better than that, it's better than that, it's better than that, it's better than that. Probably there yeah it's good it's just, like i say i'm just not a star wars guy so i'm not there like screaming and fanboying when luke skywalker shows up with a bad cgi'd face or anything i'm just, it's like it's oh yeah it's luke <laughs> it's kind of like my reaction to it would be but again probably another reason why i probably sh just shouldn't do reactions to it so yeah it's good it's decent merlin another show that well actually Another show that I was going to say that I need to get back to at some point, but one of the few shows that I've just been fully spoiled on, um, on the, literally the final episode. Like the big thing that happens in the final episode, I know what happens. Um, I'm not going to say it, obviously, but yeah, it's one of those recommended videos popped up on YouTube. It's like, 
oh, this scene. And I was like, are you joking me? <laughs> so that's kind of what's putting me off. I'm sure there's loads of great moments that I haven't been spoiled on in Merlin as well, which is good. But literally the biggest thing you could be spoiled on in Merlin happened to me. So that's unfortunate. I was really enjoying it up to uh, where I watched it. And it did have its episodic vibe going on as well. But the characters were so fun. And the overarching story was so interesting to me that I didn't mind it. Like Merlin and Arthur as characters were great. Their bromance and their bond worked so well uh, throughout the episodes as well. Uh, Gwen was great. That's something to remember. I remember that there were some episodes I gave like a 9 and 10 to from when I was watching it. So I don't know. I'm kind of like 50-50 on whether I want to get back to it. Because I did really enjoy it. And it is only 5 seasons so it is very short like 10 episodes a season or something or 12 episodes but i just know the biggest thing that happens <laughs> it's so annoying so thanks youtube for that recommended video uh so based on what i've seen i'm gonna put it in really good probably just below dexter i'm thinking there yeah it was really solid Got some good villains in there. The CGI was a bit stink at times. Like it was very BBC CGI. Luckily they didn't overdo it. I want to, from what I remember, they did have some CGI in there that was bad. <laughs> but it's kind of the charm of it. I think it kind of actually worked for Merlin in a way. Out of all the shows that can have bad CGI, I'd say Merlin is the only one that can kind of maybe get away with it. So yeah my hero academia how the mighty have fallen is what we say about my hero academia now i remember that this is all anyone could talk about when seasons one two and three were out and then correct me if i'm wrong it's on season six now and i never hear anyone talk about it i got to season five i think the start of season five or towards the end of season four and i was just kind of like, i'm done with this show uh they were starting to do the whole uh filler let's talk about this character Okay, let's talk, we've talked, let's talk about this character. It just kind of got boring, honestly. It got boring. Seasons 1, 2, and 3 slapped. They were so good. Some of the like best fight scenes I've seen. Well, one or two. One of the two of the fight scenes in that show is some of the best I've seen, but uh, it kind of fell off. So I'm going to put it in... <sighs> season 4 stunk. I didn't watch Season 5, but I've heard it's not great, so I can't say too much on Season 5. Based on what I've seen, I'm going to put it in really good. Because seasons 1, 2, and 3 were solid. So, I'm leaning towards... Kill to Kill's better, so not as high as that. Hmm, probably... There. Better than Hannibal, just because, like I say, <laughs> there are some great moments in that show, I can't deny it. As much as I fell off with the show and I have no intentions of going back to it, unless I hear it becomes the greatest thing of all time again, which I doubt it will. Uh, I think everyone's kind of just over it now. Yeah, my reckoning was good. Midnight Mass. I watched this one twice. I watched this one off camera. I did want to react to it, but I think when I got to the show, it just kind of, it had been out for about a month or two, and I kind of wanted a show to watch off camera. So I did uh, Midnight Mass, and then I watched it with my mum as well uh, when I watched it the second time. This show is amazing. It's very dialogue heavy. It is just dialogue, pretty much 95% of it. But the dialogue's so engaging. I am shocked that the actor who plays the priest was not even nominated for an Emmy. He was one of the best. He gave one of the best performances in a TV show last year. 1,000%. I don't think he's as strong as like uh, Rhea, Rhea, I don't know how you say her name, from Better Call Saul. For example, I think she needs to win the Emmy for Kim. She was amazing. But they're two different categories, I guess, because you've got like the, the male category and then the female for the Emmy. So in terms of male actors, he could have had a shot, but he wasn't even nominated. So that is baffling. That's another story. But the acting was outstanding. The music was incredible. Cinematography, beautiful. Uh, it's kind of like this... Which Where is he on the poster? This character here has kind of got small... <laughs> poster head right there first scene he's killed someone like he's drunk he's drunk driving and he's killed someone uh he does his time in prison and then he gets let out and goes back to this i've got the islands called like croaky island or so <laughs> it's definitely not that uh crocky island i don't really know but it's like this little island where this little community lives and he goes back to there to 
you know, spend the rest of his days, I guess you could say. And things get a bit wild on the island. It's not like lost like a big island. It's like literally an island where there's a community and stuff. It's not like they're abandoned on an island. But yeah, things get very good. It's only seven episodes. So I think it's like very easy to get through an hour per episode. So they are quite long. But first episode, I was into it. And I think I finished it in about two days. So also, um, Mike Flanagan, amazing. His next show comes out in two weeks, I want to say, in October. So perfect for Halloween. I think it's called The Midnight Club. I will be there because Midnight Mass was fantastic. We're going to put it in fantastic. Probably, where am I feeling it? Where am I feeling? I preferred Godless. I, I love Godless to death. So it's not going to be as high as that. However, it's going to be, hmm, I'm thinking, there? Just below Bates Motel. I think it looks good there. Yeah. Slap bang in the middle of Fantastic. Only one season as well. That It wraps up the story in the first, well, the only season it's going to have. So uh, you, can, you can get through that very quickly if you want to watch it. Mindhunter, one of the most baffling cancellations that Netflix has given I I didn't even watch season 2 season 2 was there, I was ready to watch it and then they cancelled it I was like well there's no point I'm not going to get like a resolution to the story so I'm not going to watch season 2 but I cannot believe Netflix cancelled this show <laughs> season 1 was amazing amazing and people said season 2 was just as good as well from what I've heard about it and then Netflix cancelled it why? I get with shows like the yesterday they literally cancelled Resident Evil, so it's like with shows like that I kind of get it, but Mind Hunter, the yeah, Netflix are ridiculous by the way. I can't stand them. <laughs> so based on what I've seen, I'll go really good. Season one was solid, but I just I I'm not gonna watch season two because I know it's been cancelled and I'm not gonna get a resolution to my story. I'm gonna put it probably there yeah season one was really solid i enjoyed it it's like about serial killers and it's kind of when the term serial killer wasn't a thing from what i remember about season one i watched it when it first came out so it was a while ago and these two detectives start investigating serial killers i guess um and that's the premise of it <laughs> that's like the basics of the story without giving away too much but it's like say it's before the the phrase serial killer was a thing so it was like when they were just starting to it's like the rise of them and yeah they, they get some famous names in there that's for sure so it's good stuff i think it ended it ended very well with season one actually so i was actually very excited for season two and then heard that i was like oh, okay uh misfits the uk do they have a us one of misfits actually i'm not sure if they do i know they have a us in between us have we done the in between us yet have we done the in between have I even put in between us on here? Have I not put the in between us on here? I... Where would I have put the? In... I would have put him fantastic, hundred percent. I can't see it. I might have missed a show. Oh no, it's there. it's there. Never mind. I'm blind. Yeah, I've been doing the a case of that. It's like all there. But yeah, I know they've got an American version of the in between us and an American version of Skins. I'm not sure if they have one of Misfits. So if anyone knows that, let me know. But the UK one, seasons one and two, great. Um, then not so good. <laughs> the main actor leaves in season three and he was like the he was the glue to this show. Uh, as soon as he left, was nowhere near as strong. So I'm going to go really good from what I remember about it. This was like, this Skins and the Inbetweeners was the shit for the UK back in the day. They were like the three shows everyone in your school would watch weekly. That's it. If you didn't watch those three shows on a weekly basis at our school, you weren't welcome. <laughs> it's simple as that. So, yeah, Misfits, I'd say out of those three, was the weakest. I'd say Skins and the Inbetweeners were better, so we'll keep that one in mind. Um, but from what I remember about it, Series 1 and 2 was great. And then I didn't even bother with... I know they had Series 4 and 5, I believe. I didn't even bother with those, so... Um, but again, that was everyone kind of agreed, all right, we should probably stop watching Misfits now because it just kind of fell off. 
Um, I prefer to Fruit Basket, I prefer to Daily Lives, I prefer it to Mandalorian, I prefer it into the Badlands. Not as good as Mad Men, so we'll go there. Yeah, I'm happy because Dead to Me is better as well, I prefer just so yeah, that makes sense. We'll put Misfits there. Um, Mob Psycho 100. That's a pretty cool poster. I do like that poster. Mob Psycho 100, though. I just don't think it was kind of like One Punch Man. Just wasn't really my thing. However, Mob Psycho was way better than One Punch Man. So wherever One Punch Man is, I would have put One Punch Man in average. No. Oh, I've, I've not done. I've not done One Punch Man yet. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I, I've spoken about One Punch Man, but that was in the TV tournament. That wasn't to do with this. Well, that's why I confused myself there. Um, I keep forgetting this is alphabetical, and I'm there just like looking for One Punch Man. Mob Psycho. Yeah, One Punch Man will be an average, and this probably would as well, honestly. Um, I preferred Lucifer, I preferred Fear. I didn't prefer it to Entourage, though, so I'll, I'll put it there. Yeah, it just... Great animation. I think the story is actually solid as well. I just think, for me, it didn't really grip me. So, I didn't really care for any of the characters. Maybe there was one or two in there that were decent, but... Yeah, not... Not my thing. I'll say that. I know they've got season two, which is meant to be way better as well, but I think I started season two and never finished it. So, yeah. Uh, modern, <coughs> modern Family. Modern, we're not doing the croaky voice. Okay, Modern Family. One of the best sitcoms that I've seen, I think. I think Friends is better. And The Office is way better. However, other than those two, Modern Family, I'd put at number three. I prefer Modern Family to New Girl. I've seen less of New Girl. I think I watched five seasons of Modern Family, so I never finished it. But the characters were great. The jokes were actually decent. Apart from, I think it was like Manny, that character. I didn't like him. He annoyed me. I didn't like Manny at all. Everyone else <laughs> was really good, especially Phil, Phil the dad. And Claire. I had like the biggest crush on Claire as a character, the, uh, the mum character. So there is that to keep in mind. Everyone was pretty solid in this show though apart from Manny. I don't think anyone liked Manny. I think if you ever do like mo not that I ever have it. I guarantee if you ever do modern family characters ranked unless like new characters come into it which I'm pretty sure they do. Manny surely has to be at the bottom every time. There's no way he isn't. <laughs> uh, based on what I've seen though so we've got friends up there. We haven't done the office yet so I'll keep that in mind. Modern family though I'm going to put at the top of really good, I'm thinking. I'm uh. Sorry, my brain's working in real time while I try to figure this out, because I'm thinking either at the very top of really good or genuinely at the bottom of fantastic. I'm gonna put it in fantastic. I think it is actually that good. It might fall off in the second half of the show. Like I said, I did not finish it. But if you're going off the first five seasons of this show. Yeah, unfortunately, that's why I can't do reactions to the show is because I've seen half the show already, so I'm not gonna do reactions to it. But uh, those first five seasons were surprisingly good. I remember I was just lying in bed one day and I just randomly put it on. I was like, oh, "We'll give the first step a go," and then the first step was genuinely actually really funny. I was like, "Okay," so yeah, very st the first episode as well, not in tone but in its story, is actually kind of similar to This Is Us. If you know, you know. So I think that's kind of cool. But is it better than Daredevil? Actually, I'm going to put Making a Murderer there because I think I prefer Daredevil. And I'm going to put Modern Family there. Yeah, I'm happy with it there. That surprised me. Yeah. I just reminded myself of how good the show is. So, Money Heist. Hmm. Money Heist. How do we feel about Money Heist? I did. I don't think I loved this show as much as a lot of people did. I'll say that. However, actually, when I left it off, it started to get really good. Like, really good. They were doing another heist, so it was kind of like more of the same, like with Prison Break, where they kind of like, oh, we're called Prison Break, so we better keep breaking out of prison, I guess. So they just kept doing that. It kind of had that same vibe, but better. So maybe I'll finish it. I think it's finished now, and then they did Money Heist Career or something. And that was meant to be awful. So I'm sure they're going to do it. And then they did like Money Heist Germany. And then I'm waiting for Money Heist UK. That'd be kind of cool. 
don't know how that would work, but we'll, we'll get it done. Set it in London or something. Money Heist, I'm going to put him really good. Um, I'm getting him in the, probably the minority of that one. I've only watched seasons one and like half of season two, so do keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to put it... It was better than Heartstopper. Um, actually, was it? Was it better than Heartstopper, though? Or have you just put Heartstopper too high? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I'm confused myself now. I don't think I put Heartstopper too high. I think Money Heist... Not as good as Mindhunt. Not as good as Jessica Jones. Not as good as House of Cards. Not as good as American Crime Story. It's, uh, not, it's better than that show. So probably there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That was, that was confusing because I was debating if Friday Night Lights is better than Heartstopper, but then I'm like, yeah, it is. So Friday Night Light needs to go there then. Okay. We might have a few in real time moments of swapping things just so we're aware. <laughs> uh, Mr. Robot, another show that I didn't finish. I got to the last season. The, the, some parts of this show just confused me. I think the acting was great. I think the story and premise of it was interesting enough. Um, actually, way more than interesting enough. I think the premise of it was really solid, especially like the ending of season one. But there were some moments where I started to question like what was actually going on. Because it does the whole, oh, he's actually is this in his head? Is this in real life? Kind of, it does that quite a lot throughout the show. And I think I just started to get a bit sick of it because there were just so many moments where I was like, oh, he's actually in his head. It didn't happen. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Well, there you go. <laughs> So, Mr. Robot, I, th maybe I might finish this one day. I'm not going to say yes like I have with a lot of shows, but maybe. Maybe in like a couple of years. So maybe when we come back to this next year, that's when I'll say, okay, I'll do Mr. Robot. Because there's other shows that have a priority for now. But I'm going to put it in really good. There's no denying it's a really well-made show. Also, the creator of this show, Sam Amir, Am I? I don't know how to say his last name, is married to the actress who plays Fiona in real life from Shameless. Emmy Rossum. Uh, who is an, who is another celebrity crush. I think everyone has a celebrity crush on Emmy Rossum though, so that's not even news. Let's go... Uh, Mr. Robot, where do we put you, sir? Better than Money Heist, better than Heartstopper. Not as good as Friday Night Lights. <laughs> I like Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with it there. I know that's going to disappoint a few people because people, fans of this show as well, like, love it. Adore it. I mean, that kind of speaks for itself if you're a fan of something, but I remember the fan base of that show were, like, very, very passionate. <laughs> I'll say that. All right, let's do... What are we doing? We've done L and M today, so I'll say we do N, which has three. How many O's do we have? We have O from Orange is the New Black all the way up to Ozark. All right, we're good on time. So we'll do the N's and the O's. Let's do that. So Narcos, this is only the like seasons one and two because I think they have Narcos. It's like a different show where it's basically that show season three, but it's not because it's a new show. So a spin-off, but it's also set up. You know, it don't matter. <laughs> uh, but the first two seasons, amazing. So it's definitely going in fantastic. Season 2 of this show, it's got Pedro Pascal in as well, who's playing Joel in The Last of Us, which is awesome. Who's also The Mandalorian. So that, I think Narcos might be the first thing I saw him in. I know he popped up in Buffy for one episode, but Narcos I'd watched before that. And I really liked it. So the actor who plays, I'm blank, I'm literally blanking on his name. I'm not even going to try and think about it, but... If you know, I do know his name. It's just literally gone from my memory for for literally the five minutes I need to remember it about. Um, yeah, but they actually played him. Has he done anything? I'm sure he's done stuff since, but I've not seen that to pop up. But he was like, he gave one of those performances where I thought it was Emmy worthy, and then he just kind of disappeared. So I don't know what happened there. Um, as for Narcos, the show, I am feeling better than Midnight Mass. This is like one of the early, actually, I don't, was it one of the early Netflix originals as well? I think it was one of the early popular ones. I know House of Cards was the first one, but I think Narcos was pretty early on. It was definitely around the time when Netflix were very selective with the shows they kind of put put out. 
Now, not so much. <laughs> I preferred Godless, so it's not as good as that. Um, and I preferred Bates, so I'm feeling there. Slap Bang in the middle of Fantastic. But only the first two seasons. I know it went on to do more, so I'm not counting that because I didn't watch that. Once like this story had wrapped up, that was good. Naruto. Only the original one. Naruto Shippuden should also be here, but I've only watched, I believe it was 20 episodes of Shippuden. So I've always d been debating in my mind whether to react to that because I have no anime or animation on the show at, on the channel at the moment. But Naruto is just that would take me 20 years to get through those episodes. But I loved this as a kid. Like I said, with Misfit Skins and uh, Misfit Skins and the In Betweeners, Naruto was another show that just people at our school just watched. Um, I feel like every school it was either Dragon Ball or Naruto, and I remember we we had that debate in our school as well. But I was never I never watched Dragon Ball. Never have I ever watched Dragon Ball or One Piece or any of those big ones. The only like big OG anime I've ever watched is Naruto, and it slaps. <laughs> it still slaps. I still go back and watch that Naruto v Sasuke fight every now and again, just for fun, and it still holds up. It's so good. The one thing I love about that I've come to appreciate more with the Naruto and Sasuke fight is they have. No music. They bring in music towards the second half of the fight or the final third of it, but it's just it's just animation and a few like grunts here and there. I don't know. It's amazing. I love that fight. I'm talking about the the one v one at the end of the original Naruto. I know they have fights in Shippuden as well, which I've not watched, which I don't want to watch because again, I might react to it at some point. But yeah, I love. It. I think the characters are great. I, they definitely have a lot of filler and stinky moments in there. I think if you are talking about OG Naruto, there is so much that does not need to be there that is laughable. However, I know there are versions of Naruto now where it cuts that all out and has just made it into a compact story that you can cut out. I think it's literally about 40% of the show that doesn't need to be there, which is ridiculous. If you think of any show, like imagine watching Breaking Bad and thinking to yourself, oh yeah, 40% of this show doesn't even need to be here. <laughs> That's kind of like Naruto, so it does have that. But um, I have such nostalgia for it. It was literally the first anime I ever watched. Not film-wise, but TV show-wise, Naruto was definitely the first. Um, then, like I say, I didn't watch anime for years and years, and that's when I got into, like I say, 2015, 16 is when I got into majority of the anime that's on here. But this one I watched when I was, like, a kid. So... Hmm. I'm thinking... It's not quite fantastic. It should be, though. It's so tricky, this one, because the best moments of Naruto and the memories I have of it are, like, on that level of fantastic. But they are some stinky moments. I'm going to put it in fantastic. It's my list. I can do what I want. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna put it... Um, probably there. Above How to Get Away with Murder, not as good as Dark, which are also, yes, all three of those are very similar shows, of course, but how can you even compare that? Is Naruto better than How to Get Away with Murder? I'm leaning towards yes, but I think How to Get Away with Murder is the better show. This is like kind of saying, what I'm saying with Lost and Breaking Bad. However, Naruto, I just have better memories of and a stronger connection to, I guess you could say. I think with, with anyone, if you grow up with any show, no matter what that is, you are just going to have that connection and bond to it. That you can't shake sometimes. Like, I've just uploaded the first episode of Gilmore Girls onto YouTube. And I've had so many comments that just said they used to watch watch it with their mum. I've had a couple of mums say they used to watch it with their daughter. And I was like, oh, okay. So, like, certain shows you like you just have that connection with. And uh, Naruto is one of those for me. So, it's going in fantastic. I remember watching it with my uncle. I remember watching it with my sister. I remember watching it by myself when like new seasons would come out because I wouldn't watch it live. I'd wait for the box sets to come out like I did with 24. So, some good times. <laughs> they used to cost so much though. I think you'd have to pay an arm and a leg just for a season of that show. New Girl. We are on, as of recording this, season 2, episode 12. So, this is one that I'm currently doing on the channel. I already enjoy New Girl. I think there are some episodes, actually more so in season 2 than season 1, that are a little bit... Mm, and I think there are two storylines that they've done so far where they are clearly delaying certain things just to drag it out, which I get sitcoms do. But I feel like in every other sitcom I've watched, whenever they drag something out, it kind of feels more natural. 
Whereas New Girl, it definitely comes across as forced <laughs> to drag certain things out. Jess can be very annoying as a main character at times. However, Jess can also be wonderful. And Schmidt and Winston, I think, are two incredible characters. I think they're hilarious. Cece and Nick are very good as well. But for me, it's, it's Schmidt and Winston at the moment that are really carrying the show. Without those two, this show, I think I probably would have dropped. But Winston and Schmidt bring... 75% of the energy and entertainment for me so for now I'm gonna go in really good uh, probably hmm into the badlands definitely better than that maybe th there above misfits this is one of those shows that's either gonna go up to fantastic or down to average it really depends how they play their cards um because, like I said, there are some episodes in there that are just a bit weak. Like, I'm not really laughing a lot. I will say that about New Girl. Out of all the sitcoms I've watched, sometimes it does feel like the jokes are the most forced. Um, whereas Friends, like, even when Friends has a weak joke, it doesn't... It probably... It feels forced, but I don't know. Maybe not as, as much as New Girl kind of does it, <laughs> if that makes sense. However, I will say, like, the... Two seasons of New Girl I've watched are better than the final two episode, uh, two seasons of The Office. That's for sure. The final two episode, uh, two seasons of The Office are so unfunny. <laughs> I can't. Um, well, so New Girl has that one-up, I guess. But that's not even that really big of a one-up. So, All right, we're on the O's now. Orange is the new black. Uh, I watched... What did I get to? I reacted to season four of this. And season four of this show was amazing. And then I started season five, and season five was bad. Season four ended on such a high note in terms of quality, not on happiness, that's for sure. But it was such a high note, and then season five just plummeted straight. I remember that feeling. I was like, pummeled for season five, and then it just the quality just dropped instantly. So, yeah, I'm going to take season five into account. I think I got halfway through season five. I reacted to it for one. And I didn't even react to the other episodes. I watched off camera another four or five episodes and then I stopped. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> but those first four seasons were very good. So I'm going to go in really good. Like I say, those f first four seasons leading up to that fifth season weren't the best thing I'd ever watched anyway. But they were way better than season five and what it kind of ended up being. So I'm going to put it... Probably... It's definitely in really good. Not as good as Mr. Robot, but better than Heartstopper, I'm thinking. So, I'm thinking... There. Yeah. Slap bang in the middle. One of those very good shows. Just nothing... I think the best parts about it was the acting. And, again, it kind of... When Orange is the New Black came out, it was around the time when Netflix were very picky with the shows they would bring to the platform in terms of like their original content every other show they bought on there is whatever but in terms of a netflix original season one of orange is the new black i think started around that time when it was a uh, quite a big deal when netflix bought out an original show like now no one cares everyone just laughs actually <laughs> whenever they bring anything out so if orange is the new black came out now i better get cancelled within one season so one Punch Man, I kind of said a little bit what I thought about the show when I mentioned Mob Psycho, but I did not love this show as much as I thought I was going to. I remember when this came out, everyone was amazed by it, amazed by it, and I was just kind of like, yeah. I didn't care for any of the characters, I thought the animation was great, admittedly. That's not even like an opinion, the animation of this show is just incredible, and the fights were pretty cool to look at, but in terms of story and characters... I could never get invested in it, honestly. So I'm not going to quite go more bad than good with it, but I'm going to go towards the bottom of average. Like, honestly, there. Yeah. Not for me. Not for me. I, don't, I feel like the more I watch anime, I'm, I'm kind of realising I'm just not into the whole big spectacle fight. And, you know, animes. I, just, I don't care for them. And that's literally what this show is based around, is he fights a new opponent pretty much every episode. Um... And then the big fight is like really cool. It does have some funny moments in there, I guess, but not for me. Uh, One Tree Hill. As of recording this, we're on season six, episode twelve. So, kind of coming towards the end. We have, I think, after this season we're doing, we have three left. So, 
still a long way to go, but <laughs> we're kind of getting there. We're kind of getting there. Uh, season one of One Tree Hill, incredible. Season two is okay. Then seasons three and four are incredible. Then season five is stinky. And then season six so far, I'm on the fence with, I'd say. It can go either way with season six. However, season one has this great nostalgia vibe about it, which I love. Uh, I think Brooke, Haley. I was going to say Nathan, but not so much. Brooke and Haley are consistently great throughout the show. Um, Lucas is stinky. Peyton, they ruined Peyton in season five for me. And Nathan. Nathan's good, but he's very much like the same all the way through. He never like really has ups and downs. He's just like Nathan Scott <laughs> all the way through. So the characters are good and they keep you engaged in it enough. Um, and the story... Oh, Dan Scott is by far what keeps me invested in this show. Dan is so funny and ridiculous. I think One Tree Hill is worth watching just for Dan Scott. He's so good as a character. He's so funny that I want it, I would see the show through to the end. Even if it was like some of the worst TV I've watched, I'd see it through to the end just for him. <laughs> I really would. He's that good. Um, but no, you see, it's not... The bad seasons of this show aren't, like, that bad. They're just comparing... If I'm comparing seasons three and four and one, then two and five and so far six just aren't on that level, which is unfortunate uh, because I really enjoyed the seasons that I did mention. So in terms of teen dramas, it's one of the better ones. I think... I think if you'd asked me about how I felt about One Tree Hill this time last year, I'd have said fantastic, because I think I was on around season, like late season three, maybe season four then, I'm not too sure. But however, being being halfway through season six now, I can't quite go fantastic with One Tree Hill. I think the vibe of it is, like I love the nostalgia about it, I love the over-the-top storylines and the romance about it, but I just... I. I think maybe maybe I'm being asked this at a bad time. Maybe next year when I want to finish the show, I can kind of get a more definitive answer on how I feel. But at the moment, it's in a bit of a lull. Like, I just had an episode, to like put this into perspective, I just had an episode that was an entire dream sequence from Lucas for 40 minutes about if all the characters lived in the 1940s. And Dan was a mafia boss, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> I actually did kind of like that. Dan had like a mafia moustache, and he was drowning people in the in the ocean, so that was kind of cool. But now it's like, uh, what was the point? There's forty minutes of that. I think it's like maybe the worst one trail episode I've ever watched. So maybe you're just asking me this at a bad time, but I'm gonna put it. I throw it to Gossip Girl definitely. Um, it's Euphoria. It's just season one of Euphoria is on another level, so. Yeah, I'm going to put it at the top of really good still. I do think it's still a really solid show. I think in terms of teen dramas, Buffy is better. But One Tree Hill's, I think, my second. If I'm going through Fantastic, I don't think there's any teen dramas on there apart from Buffy. Euphoria is here on this one, then One Tree Hill, then Gossip Girl. So I'd say so far that sounds about right. I think the best seasons of One Tree Hill are better than the best seasons of Gossip Girl. But the worst seasons of One Tree Hill are worse than the worst of Gossip Girl. From my memory of Gossip Girl. That was kind of what I put that out. Uh, once upon a time... Oh my god. You know, I forgot... I always forget that I reacted to this show. Or one season of it. I did one season and like half of season two. And <laughs> what I will say about reacting to Once Upon a Time is it was so much fun because it was so bad. I remember people were upset because they like... And each to their own, but they were telling me this was like one of the best shows I'm ever going to watch. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like all the characters are fairy tale characters. Like you have Pinocchio in there, and then you'll have Cinderella pop up, and then Mulan will pop up, which popped up, she popped up when I was like ending it. I was like, okay, Mulan's here now. And then who else do we have? Shrek was probably there. The BFG was probably going to show up at some point. It felt like Multiverses, that game that just came out. It felt like that, but for the fairy tale world. That's basically the best way I could describe the show. The acting was bad. The CGI was bad, like laughably awful. Um, but in terms of enjoyment and how much fun I felt like we had with it, 
it's got to be goaded. <laughs> no. If you're going by like how much of a laugh I had in terms of reactions, it would be up there. But we're not going by that. We're going by rankings of TV shows. It's 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 um. Where's it just disappeared to? Oh, we've got too much going on here. I need to like. <laughs> I can't even really organize it well. But let's go. <sighs> Where are we gonna put you? Probably an average, maybe. Oh, I can move some of these actually, I guess, because I've watched more Jujutsu Kaisen, and I finished the Cuphead show season two. So I'm gonna put this there. Yeah, Cuphead show finished season two off, so that can go up a bit. I'm thinking there. Oh, it's better than Mob Psycho. Actually, Mob Psycho can go below that. I'm below Dex of New Blood. I'm below that. I'm below that. I'm below that. Yeah, you can go there. Mob Psycho can go there. Cuphead Show can go. Oh, Fear the Walking Dead's better than Lucifer, actually. The Cuphead Show can go. Not as good as Heroes, but better than American Horror Story. Actually, no. Probably there. Better than Fear, no. But better than Lucifer, yes. Um. And Jujutsu Kaisen I've watched more of. I'm still going to keep it an average for now. But I'm going to put it... I think above Lucifer. Yeah, I think in there. Yeah, a couple of organisational issues will have in there. Alright, we've got two more. Outer Banks, or as we call it, Inner Wanks. I don't know why, we just kind of... I don't know what that's about. That's just kind of... <laughs> what is Outer Banks? What is this show? It's so ridiculous. It feels like it's Riverdale, but on the beach. <laughs> it's Riverdale if they were on the beach. I, that's the best way I can describe it. These characters I hate. I hate all of these characters pretty much. They annoy me so much. This is the definition of if you want a TV show where characters make poor decisions and it gets them in trouble constantly, watch out, Banks. However... It is a lot of fun. The show knows exactly what it is. Like, it doesn't try to be anything more than what it knows it is, which I can kind of respect. Uh, and I'll be there for season three. Season three, I believe, is um, being filmed right now, or they're finished filming it. So I'm going to put it in average. I'm thinking towards the top of average, because it is a lot of fun. It's so ridiculous. It's like they're always trying to pull off some mad heist or something and it just never works because they make the worst decisions a character's going to ever make. It's so frustrating. Do you remember that scene where they were filmed? They had a camcorder. Oh my god. They had a camcorder and they literally caught the villain of the show on camera murdering someone. Do you remember that scene? And then whatever a name is, they, they had it on camera. And then they just needed to sneak off and go show that camera to the police. That's all they needed to do. But one of the characters then takes it upon herself to scream down to the like villain and shouts down to him like, We got you on camera, dude! Or like something like that. I don't she says that's literally not what she says, but <laughs> she says something as ridiculous as that. She might as well have, have said that. And then the camera breaks and the, the evidence is destroyed. That is an example of how poor... That is one of, like, ten examples of the poor decisions they make. As soon as that happened, I was like, she's down in the bottom of the tier list, that's for sure. Um, I can't believe that scene. I'm just reminding myself about that. Oh, okay, right. Out of banks. <laughs> Let's go below Gossip Girl, I think. I have more fun. I think Alice in Borderland is a better show, but I just have more fun with Out of Banks. It's so insane that you just kind of have to respect it so all right final also i'm going to move gilmore girls because i've watched more of that since i last spoke about it so where i'm at, at the moment honestly really good i'm going to put it yeah i'm throwing it to a lot of these shows at the moment i'm thinking there for now yeah to again i have since the last time I did this, I think I've watched four bangers back to back. So it's on a very good pace. Um, based on how I feel about it now, that's where it would go. So we needed to move that. Ozark. 
Hose Love's a hard one. I feel like seasons one, two, and three of this show were great. So good. I thought this would go down as one of the best Netflix shows ever. Um, but I could not finish the last season. I think I've got f literally four episodes of the whole show left. It just started to drain on me. It was like more of the same in the last season. It is only four seasons, so they knew when to quit, which is good. Ru Ruth, I think, is one of the best Netflix characters. I was going to say one of the best characters of all time. I don't think it's she's that good. But in terms of Netflix characters, I think she's one of the better ones. Um, so she's the best part of the show. And season, seasons one and two are special. Seasons one and two especially are so strong that I was like genuinely convinced that it was going to go down as one of the best shows ever when I was watching. Because I think I got into it around when season three was just about to air. So yeah, it was like that prime Ozark time when it was as strong as it was. I think it really fell off in that last season though. I think the problem with Ozark is they always, not always, they, I don't say this about spoiling it, I can't, I can't, okay, skip 10 seconds if you don't want spoilers, but the worst thing about Ozark is they kill off the best villains of the show. A show's only as good as your main villain is at, at times, and Ozark was a prime example of that, and they, they ruined that, so I'm going to put it in, It would have been fantastic. It was never going to be in Goated, even as good as seasons one and two were. It was never going to be in Goated, but it would have been in fantastic. But that last season, I was not feeling it. I'm going to put it towards the top of really good, though. I'm thinking better than Kids on the Slope, better than Death Note, better than Gossip Girl, but not as good. Uh, probably there. It is still a really good show despite how weak that ending kind of was, because it did still have a lot of great episodes in there. But this could have been probably, I'd say, in the middle of Fantastic if it stuck to landing for me. But it did not. Definitely, and I've not even finished it. I just, I know the pace and the way it's going at the moment. I'm not really feeling that that ending. So, all right, if we back out a little bit here. So if we zoom out, because you can't really see much. Let's go with that. And then that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Only one trash so far, which I kind of like. Only three that are more bad than good. Quite a lot of average. A lot of like really good ones. Quite a few fantastic. And we have five go-to shows. We have my favourite show of all time, Lost. Breaking Bad 24, Better Call Saul, Avatar The Last Airbender. In terms of we we do our recommendations that I'm going to recommend, I'm thinking either... What am I leaning towards... I think Love is definitely worth a watch. It is very... If you want a good romance... There's there's other stuff that happens in the show, but it's primarily a romance. I mean, that's kind of obvious based on the title, like I said. But I do recommend that. And I'm going to say Midnight Mass. I think they're just the two I rated the highest. This Obviously Lost. I'm, so scratch all that. I'm going to say Lost. <laughs> I think Lost is just more well-known. I think Love and Midnight Mass are probably... Definitely love. Midnight Ra Mass is not less known. But I'm, I think in order of how well known they are, things like Lost, Midnight Mass, Love. So, Galru for the little guy. R love is probably the recommendation on this week's episode. But Lost is exceptional. If you have not watched Lost, do it for me. Watch the first episode. I think the pilot is a two-parter, so maybe you need to do like a two-parter with it, but it's so good. It lost is the best show of all time. <laughs> technically, it isn't, like I say, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, probably ten definitely technically better than Lost, but Lost is amazing. Please give it a watch. And then my recommendations for the week is Love, followed closely by Midnight Mass. Um, Love, Death, Robots is good, but... I think most people know about that show. Nothing else is really sticking out. Mr. Robot's cool, or anything, but yeah, nothing's sticking out. So, what we got left? We're kind of getting towards the end. We have one, two, three, four, five rows left to get through. So we've got P, P all the way down to. Well, I don't even get to Z. There's no Z shows, so. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking forward to like talking about. Sons of Anarchy is pretty... We, we, I don't want to spoil it, but we won't talk about any of these shows. <laughs> we'll just wait till next time. But yeah, I reckon we probably... This was part four, so I reckon we'll get it done in 
five, six, probably past seven or eight. So we got we got a while to go, but we did well. We started on L, and then we ended on P, L M N O, and we didn't do P, so we did three. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this ranking so far. What would you change? Is there anything that's sticking out here that you're like, that is wrong. That should not be there. Uh, if there is, then let me know. I'm pretty happy with this so far, but like I say, we'll go through it all at the end and see if anything really needs to change drastically. But as of right now, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you next time for part five. Until then, take care. Peace.